Modding is an external component of the games we play that sometimes seem to be severely underappreciated, especially in some specific genres. They appear to have a mixed reputation between either making games a chaotic mess or being a force that keeps the title alive for a very long time. And to an extent, both extremes are correct. It all depends on both the game's popularity and the tools modders have available to them. Of course, this is not as black and white in practice. Minecraft and Skyrim are well known for their modding scene, even though they don't possess dedicated modding tools. Same with more niche games like Jurassic World Evolution 2, Monster Hunter World and Darkest Dungeon to name a few. When it comes to our beloved genre, the dinosaur survival, it would be a disservice not to mention the vast array of minigames present in a massive popular platform, Roblox. Please take me seriously. There's a significant amount of dinosaur survival mods in that game, continuously being developed to this day, with even some new ones coming every so often. In fact, the first ever dinosaur survival game, excluding the shitty mobile ones, was indeed a Roblox mod nine whole months before the Isle launched in December 2015. However, Roblox, despite having the tools necessary for people to freely mod it, the game itself is extremely limited on a technical standpoint, and as a result, the minigames made there lack in quality, not necessarily because of the devs, but due to the game their mods are based on. But no matter how restrictive the tools are, one thing that we can all agree is that mods are almost always a net positive for the game they are made for. Most of us remember the good old days of Legacy when mods were fully available and embraced by the dev team. Yeah, I get used to it, I'm gonna say the word mod a lot on this video. Terra Vitae, Grim Expanse, Ezo. Isle mods are a fond memory for many players, providing them with the choice of altering their gameplay the way they want to experience it, either by changing the maps, dinosaur skins, dinosaur sounds, their stats, etc. Sadly, those times abruptly ended years ago, and its full support gone forever. Nowadays, there are still a few mods roaming around, but they are a mere shadow of what they once were. However, another game is not only embracing mods and the modding community, but it's also taking this aspect of their title as one of its core pillars. And that game, for no one's surprise, is Path of Titans. From the very beginning of its development, that Alderaan promoted Path as a game that would be as open to modding as possible, making sure that every single aspect of it is customizable. Before its implementation, I was honestly concerned about the impact that mods this open could cause to the game. Being able to tailor your experience to the way it makes you enjoy the game the most is a concept that I believe is crucial for both the game's success and its longevity. But just like anything in life, extremes are never positive. Whenever we pick a title to play, we pick it because we are looking for a specific experience. Games are made with a vision in mind, a specific challenge or adventure that devs want their players to have. Mods can improve that experience by altering or adding portions of the game that best suit each individual player to their liking. But if we take that idea to the extreme, the game could theoretically be so altered and be so different that it wouldn't match the original intended experience anymore. And I was concerned that could happen with Path, ended up being a dinosaur version of Gary's mod, so to speak. Fortunately, my worries were unfounded, and as April 2023, Path of Titans is showing immense potential through its modding scene. From my knowledge, the game's dev kit isn't even publicly available yet, and we are already seeing a huge increase in both the mod's quantity and quality. The Gondo update was only released a few months ago, and we already have modded marine and flying creatures in the game, with even more already in the making. Not only that, we have even more independent teams starting development of mods for Path recently, creating not just dinosaur editions, but all sorts of creatures, modern animals, prehistoric animals, marine reptiles, and even full-blown monsters are being made. 
The absolute explosion of mods being announced for the past two months is astonishing, especially when we consider that their quality has been increasing exponentially, offering high quality models with great animations, good sound design and unique abilities and playstyles. This more or less sudden rise of the modding scene is all due to the game's increased popularity. Ever since Gondwa that the game skyrocketed in its player base, by far becoming the biggest dinosaur survival game on the market, something that they already talked in more detail on this video. Furthermore, the dev team openly and fully supports both the dev kit and the community, going as far as creating promotional material with the sole purpose of showcasing mods. This level of approval and even promotion of modding is of huge importance regarding the relationship between the fanbase and Alderaan. It makes modders feel safe and welcomed, which, believe it or not, is very impactful towards their motivation. That and it creates a healthier environment within the community and that's also nice. This is also very important for something else entirely. Something that, despite not being about the game itself, it may be even more important. Let me explain. Regardless if they are amateur or professional, Path of Titans is basically attracting more game developers to the game through modding. This is immensely important for the genre. The more devs we attract, the bigger the chances of we, the players, have even more dinosaur games available to play in the future. Think about it. Let's assume that every single modder in Path is a complete amateur that is trying game development for the first time which we already know it's not the case. These people are using the game to practice their skills, to improve their capabilities and possibly even becoming actual developers later on. Path is bringing enormous amounts of talent to the genre, and if kept that way, it will be only a matter of time until this beautiful genre breeds new high quality titles that we can all enjoy. Path has a real potential to popularize the entire genre beyond the game itself. That alone would be amazing. But going back to just POT now, notice how the vast majority of mods are dinosaur additions with a few maps here and there. Dinosaur owners can change dinosaur stats without needing mods, so I didn't count that. Even though that's already good enough, keep in mind that Alderaan wants the game to be as customizable as possible. And that opens almost endless possibilities. It is only a matter of time until we see modded game modes, modded mechanics, graphical changes. Imagine people modding the way quests work, for example, adding modded nesting. This is Alderaan's end goal with Path's dev kit. The potential is immense, and if done correctly, it will have a massive impact in both the game itself and the entire genre as a whole. I can't wait to get my hands on this beautiful acro mod and I'm very excited to see how expensive mods will be in the future. I know not everyone enjoys Path, but I know that we can all agree that this is beneficial for everyone, even if you don't play the game at all. But what do you guys think? Are you excited for the upcoming mods as well? Let me know in the comments below. A huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for supporting the channel and the content I create. If you want to join the ranks, the link will be in the description. Don't forget to leave your thoughts and opinions down below. Join our Discord server for memes and pillar stuff. And I hope to see you all next week.